Um, uh, Ms Led, some new rules to protect parliamentary staff from harassment are to be voted on this week. You yourself led the, uh, the cross-party review. I mean, is this the system that will finally put an end uh, to the poor behaviour, uh, well, and even worse? Well, I sincerely hope so. Um, when the Prime Minister asked me to chair that group, um, it really was an enormous amount of work. We took huge amount of evidence from different groups, from staff, from people who work around and in Parliament. And yes, I think what the ambition is, is to be amongst the best employer and place to work and be treated with dignity and respect. And that is the plan. Mm. Uh, well, we wish you well with that. Um, simple, straightforward question. Will we be coming out of the European Union on March the 29th, uh, 2019? Yes, we absolutely will. That is, uh, as the Prime Minister made clear right from her Lancaster House speech, we will be leaving the European Union, the single market, the customs union. Uh, we'll be taking back control of our borders and our laws, and that is absolutely our plan. I mean, will we? Will we, though? I mean, this is, this is the confusing thing to me. On, on the 30th of March 2019, we'll still have ECJ oversight, so no sovereignty. We won't even have the £350 million that was promised uh, for the NHS. We, we won't have complete control of our borders. In what way is that leaving the European Union? Well, what we are seeking to do is to get the best freest possible trade deal with our EU friends and neighbours. That's in all of our interests that we do that. We'll be continuing to collaborate together on issues around security and in terms of how we approach the rest of the world on foreign and defence and so on. But at the same time, we want to make sure that for businesses and for individuals living in the UK and around the EU, only have to make one set of changes. So we'll be having an implementation period that means that the changes that take us to our new relationship with the EU have time to bed in and to be properly up and running before such time as we finally move to those new arrangements. So we are leaving the EU in March 2019 as set out under all of our plans, but at the same time that implementation period will enable a smooth transition for businesses and for people. Uh, so, so what was agreed at, at, at Chequers this week? I wasn't there, I knew you weren't there, but you're, you're probably more likely to have David Davis's mobile number than I am. Well, essentially, it was a very positive discussion, and um, the Prime Minister will be speaking about that on Friday, following a further discussion with Cabinet. So um, I can't uh, give you details right now of what was discussed, but suffice to say it was a very positive discussion. All of those who were at that particular sub-Cabinet committee meeting were in agreement at the end of it and the intention is that we will indeed be leaving the European Union and that we will have arrangements for free trade with our EU friends and neighbours that work for all of us. It, it did seem in the immediate aftermath of the Chequers meeting that the, the harder Brexiteers had won the day, all the talk was of divergence, but now we hear talk of, of managed diversion, uh, divergence, of putting different economic activity into different baskets with, with different levels of divergence. I mean, in what world will the European Union agree to that? Because it's not this one. Well, you know, the reality is, when you look at the practicalities of trade, there are certain areas, like certain supply chains, where it is vital for all interests that you have similar rules. In other areas where there aren't complex, um, time-limited supply chains, it's perfectly possible to diverge. And what the Prime Minister has always been clear about is that we will seek an arrangement that works for all of us. Now, our EU friends um, export to us an enormous amount more than we do to them. It'll be in their interest, in the interest of French farmers, in the interest of German manufacturers, that they continue to have free, um, low or zero tariff and zero or low non-tariff barrier arrangements with the United Kingdom. But surely either the European Union won't let us cherry pick which economic activity goes into which basket, you know, you want to put the automotive industry here, you want to put bits of agriculture here, either that or they themselves will cherry pick and place uh, economic activity into the baskets that best suit them. And we either situation we come off worse. Well, I don't, I don't agree with that, actually. I think, um, you know, where we have close collaborations with the EU, as things stand today, we have exactly the same rules. You know, we've been exactly implementing the same rules, directives, um, legislative arrangements as the EU in terms of trade for the last 43 years. So when we start in our new relationship outside of the EU, through our EU withdrawal bill, we will have brought into UK law 
all of those rules and regulations. So the day after we leave, things will look exactly the same as the day before we leave. So it's at that point, it's there where you're looking at what areas will we want to diverge away, possibly in the area of, for example, animal welfare, where possibly we will want to have higher standards, or in the areas of financial services, where financial services are a very big part of our economy, much more so in relative to the size of our overall economy than is the um, same for the European Union. And we may want to have slightly different rules, and it should be possible in agreement it, amongst it's ourselves possible. to it's do that. It's possible, but it's difficult to see that the European Union will agree to this. I, I just want to ask a quick question, though. Do you, do you ever sit at night by the fire with your head in your hands and think, do you know what, I could do a better job than Theresa? I, I think it, this is an incredibly complex negotiation and I think that um, the Prime Minister is doing the most amazing job. She is trying to tread a fine line between negotiating with the European Union and at the same time accommodating the views right across the House, which are very varied from those wanting to just reverse the referendum to those genuinely wanting to improve the legislation. And what I'm really pleased is to have the job of trying to help her in listening to all those different views across Parliament, to taking them into account, to adopting all those ideas that do improve the legislation and to persuading people where it's not going to help the United Kingdom or the EU to back away from their proposals. So my role in helping to facilitate our domestic readiness is one that I am thoroughly enjoying doing. So no, I, I don't wish I was uh, doing her job at all.